G'day guys, my name is CJ. It's been a while, life has gotten in the way a little bit and I've missed you guys. Much has happened since the first impressions video. We've had so many new phones and gadgets released, but we're gonna talk about the S10 because I've been using it almost non-stop for the last few months as my main phone. Now that the Note 10 and Plus models are out, now is a better time than ever to revisit this early 2019 flagship and decide, is this the phone for you? Let's take a look. So thanks for tuning in. To start off with, if you're new to this channel, I hope you enjoy your stay. Give us a thumbs up if you do and consider subscribing and following me on social media. So I've had the S10 Plus since it was released in March, and I'm gonna start off by stating the obvious. It's one of the best Galaxy phones ever, even with the Note 10 being around. Let me explain. 2019 has been all about the race to zero front bezels. So we'll start there. We've had fat notches, teardrop notches, slider mechanisms, pop-up cameras, and now the punch hole display. And as far as compromises go, I think this is one of the better choices. It sits in the top right hand corner and it really does get out of the way, especially when you're watching video or playing games as often your hand tends to cover it anyway. Also, I don't mind the pill shape cutout in the Plus models, but I do think they should have sacrificed the depth sensor and kept the same lean looking single circle hole seen in the smaller models. The screen itself is absolutely stunning and the Quad HD AMOLED display is typical Samsung, meaning it's one of the best. It's got excellent viewing angles, outdoor visibility, color accuracy, resolution, there's no real need to elaborate further than to say that anyone will be happy with a screen like this. Even though it does lack a faster refresh rate that we now see in other great phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Asus ROG 2. That being said, it basically matches the brand new Note 10 pound for pound in specs. Externally, the phone is standard 2019 premium flagship affair. Glass on the front and back, shiny aluminium frame on the sides, Nice tactile clicky buttons, Bixby in tow on the left, and a power button that is definitely placed way too high up on the right. With all their attempts to make their phones more one-handed friendly with one UI, the power button is certainly more of a two-handed shuffle job than one-handed. Get your mind out of the gutter. The same stereo speaker setup that we've seen now for the last couple of generations is here too. Down-facing speaker and a tiny grill on the front for the front-facing speaker. It gets plenty loud and detailed, but it's certainly not as clean sounding as the iPhone XS. But unless you're directly comparing the two, you really won't know much of a difference. Then there's the X-Man Cyclops Eye on the back with its three camera module. Samsung's thrown in a new 16 megapixel ultra wide shooter without OIS. I love the wider field of view making it perfect for shooting in cramped spaces. It opens up a whole new creative perspective and as a result, I'm using it a lot more than I expected. And like Mac is in the 2000s, I'm loving it. However, it's also not the fastest lens in the world and the lack of OIS does mean it struggles in low light, leading to soft focus that lack life or usability. The other lenses are typical Samsung affair, both optically stabilized and producing nice photos in most situations. The main lens is still variable aperture for whatever that's worth, which is not much. But overall, photos still have a typical Samsung processed look. So if you don't like how photos from Galaxy phones from the last few years look, then this phone still isn't gonna change that. Now, as with the trend with 2019 flagships, it's also got a night mode, which initially started as a poor man's night sight with photos looking nice and blurry, over-processed with a heap of noise reduction, terrible detail. But surprisingly, with software updates and iterations, nighttime processing has really improved dramatically and now sits just below the Pixel and the Huawei P30 Pro for quality. Now video on these cameras are excellent too. The S10 can shoot at 4K 60 frames per second and the 960 FPS slow motion capture is also here. Also matching other 2019 flagships, it can shoot 240 frames per second slow motion in full HD. All of these are top of the range quality and you really won't be disappointed. Though at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it still doesn't match the iPhone XS for video quality. But one even bigger plus though is the ability to shoot video with the wide angle lens at 4K 30, something that the OnePlus 7 Pro still can't do. It opens up even more handheld creative possibilities and combined with a gimbal, you'll be able to get some pretty sweet dynamic shots. And I mentioned gimbal because 4K video out of the wide angle lens isn't stabilized, so bear that in mind. But if you don't mind shooting in 1080p, 
The S10 comes with a super steady mode that gives you electronic stabilization that is so aggressive and smooth that it can sometimes come across looking a little robotic. Now speaking of robots, the bender shaped selfie module on the top is interesting. The pill shaped cutout is to fit a depth sensor to the S10 Plus that to my eye doesn't really add that much practical value and it's probably why Samsung omitted that from the Note 10. In portrait mode the edge detection is okay at best and the quality of the selfie camera is just above average. I'd still place the Pixel 3 selfie camera well above with detail and quality. Samsung is still doing something weird with its processing even with all beauty modes turned off. Skin tones still look airbrush and soft but details in hair and beards seem to be well preserved. It's a bizarre combination and I'm not a massive fan. Also the faux wide angled view is stupid and they should really just leave the field of view at the camera's widest. Overall, camera performance on the back is excellent, but the cameras on the front, however, they're pretty average. Now let's talk about performance. Powering this is an Exynos 9820, or a Snapdragon 855 for peeps in the US. It has RAM variations from eight to 10 gigs, and it's also got 128 gigabytes to one terabytes of storage, depending on the model and a 4,100 mAh battery in tow with the S10 Plus. All of this is to power Samsung's new One UI, which sits on top of Android Pie. To me, this has been the best iteration of Samsung's software to date. Now, for a long time, software jank has been the Galaxy's Achilles heel. You could buy one new, and despite it being literally fresh out of the box, you'd see moments of stutter even with the most simple actions. Not this time though. With five months of use, the experience has remained consistently smooth and speedy. And that's the key, consistency. Something that was not present in Galaxy phones before. It's a very welcome change. And speaking of welcome changes, the One UI modifications for one hand use genuinely makes a big difference, especially on phones this big. It's still only on Samsung main apps, but at least it's in apps that matter like messages and the phone. The next step Samsung needs to make, however, is to make a more intuitive gesture navigation experience as One UI's current version is nothing more than a glorified navigation bar. At least Android 10 does look promising. And as mentioned before, Bixby unsurprisingly is still here, but at least they built in a way for you to trigger a different app when you undoubtedly accidentally press that button. Next, battery life. Samsung has been pretty conservative with batteries for a few years after the Note 7. So it's great to see this change first with the Note 9 and now with the S10 Plus. For me, the 4,100 milliamp hour battery has been a bit of a mixed bag with an average screen on time of about four to five hours with standard use. I always plug my phone in at night and typically we do end a day with about 20 to 30%, most of the time, more or less by the end of the day. It also hasn't deteriorated after five months of use. And in fact, it feels like it's solidified over this time and has remained even more consistent, which is a really good sign. There's no super fast warp charging like the OnePlus 7, but this S10's fast charging is still respectable. I also really like wireless charging, a feature I really missed when using the OnePlus 7. The inbuilt reverse charging is a cool gimmick, but I rarely used it in the last five months of owning the S10. That being said, it comes across as a useful feature for accessories with built-in wireless charging. Now finally, something that people may consider a gimmick is the in-screen fingerprint reader. Instead of the optical readers many Chinese companies have thrown in, Samsung has opted for an ultrasonic solution that is, well, inconsistent at best. It can go through periods where it unlocks your phone really quickly and accurately, and then it goes through phases where everything has fallen to sh no matter where you are, how you place your thumb, it just won't unlock, and then you end up locking yourself out for five minutes. And that's even when you register your fingerprint more than once. Now there's been a few software updates that has improved its consistency over time, but I certainly don't have the same confidence in this as I do with an optical reader like we see in the OnePlus 7. So even as we move into the latter stages of 2019, the S10 still, in my opinion, stands up really well to the competition. It can be had for quite a bit cheaper than when it was first released, and now it rivals phones that come at a bit more of a budget like the OnePlus 7 Pro. And it still rocks the latest hardware that phones even now are being released with, like the Note 10. So when you start comparing the S10 to phones like the Note 10, it basically still has the same screen quality, same quality of cameras, and wouldn't you know it, it's the last Galaxy phone to actually have a headphone jack. So if you're looking for a 2019 flagship without paying the toppest of dollars at this time of year, the S10 should certainly still be up there for your consideration. 
Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you guys think the S10 is still worth buying? Let me know why or why not in the comments section below. As always, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Remember, like, subscribe and say good day to your mum for me. Cheers.